Everyone, it is Kevin with Words of the Age. I'm back. Uh, I apologize for being away for so long. I think it's been like six months since I have recorded anything for this channel. It's not been an easy season, to say the least. Uh, this channel did not go over very well with people um, I care about here in my immediate life, but at the end of the day, I realized that I have to be obedient. So I am recording again. So thank you all for who have been uh, emailing me and praying for me and uh, wanting this channel to go back again. So here we are. And so what I'm going to start off with, because there's a number of messages I feel the Lord has put on my heart to share with everyone, and the biggest one right now is the decision time that I believe that we are all in. It may seem like a simple decision, but it is a subtle one to parse out, which is we choose God or Babylon. Now, many of you will go, well, duh, that's an easy choice. You know, of course I choose God. Well, good. But the key with this is examining our lives very closely. What are the fruit of our lives? I know a lot of people have come to know the Lord late in life. Um, they know what it's like to be in Babylon. They know what it's like to be in the gutter. They know what it's like to be involved in deep sin. And they are people I've noticed who are like, I want absolutely nothing to do with worldly systems, worldly ways. Um, but for a lot of us who have walked with the Lord since we were kids, it's very easy to allow certain worldly pleasures, certainly worldly focuses, to kind of creep into our lives. And we have to understand that this is Babylon. This is Babylonian worldly impact on our lives. It impacts our faith, it impacts our walk, it impacts the authority with which we walk. So we must, all of us, all of us, me, you, everyone, who is walking in the Lord must examine our hearts and our lives. Because, you see, here's the risk with certain churches um, and many churches around the world is that it can, they can very much be fooled into thinking we are absolutely serving God when all of a sudden Babylon is walked in the door and they become more like social groups than anything else. And I'm going to read this and see if this sounds familiar to anybody, especially you pastors and leaders in churches. I don't care how big or small, see if this is something that sounds familiar. And it's from Revelations 3. Um, this is to the church of Laodicea. I know your works, that you were neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and dine with him, and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. And the Lord's rebuking you or chasing you. Good. Press in. Invite it. Because he's only wanting us to be of greater character. So be very careful if you think, oh, we've got everything that we need. Oh, no, we're fine. Oh, no, we're good. Be wise. Be wise. Be wise. Now, this is not a new call. This has been going out from beginning that God spoke to be of him and not of the world. It was to Abraham. It was to Isaac. It was to Joshua. It's like, be of me. For, I, you know, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that is the same that's true now. Now, why is God emphasizing this? Is because the church has become worldly. Christians are going around, in the name of Jesus, doing things that are of the world, that are toxic and poisonous, and we drag Jesus' name through the mud by doing so, and we keep 
the children of God who we lead from feasting on his bounty out of fear. Out of fear of God working supernaturally, out of fear of change, out of fear that we have to address the issues in our own lives. We need to trust in the Lord to clean up our lives and lead our people. That is our job. As leaders, we are held to account. And for the watchmen who call from the walls, who call for danger, if they see danger coming, it is their job to report it. Otherwise, that account is upon their heads. To you and to all the watchmen who are called in this respect, I will be praying for you because the watchmen are taking their hits. And I've noticed because a lot of them have gone silent, including me, because we've taken the hits. I've taken the hits. But at the end of the day, we have jobs to do. Now, as watchmen, now in God's kingdom, I believe we do not look out just for danger. God may give us warnings, but we, want, we look out for the wretched. We look out for the poor. We look out for those who are in prison and those who are captive. It is our job to set them free. We are also lifeguards in the boat, searching in the darkness with the light of the Spirit to pull those who are drowning into the boat and bring them into the presence. So pray for us, watchmen. I will pray for you. I'll pray for all because God wishes none to perish, but come unto him. That is our job, but our houses have to be clean because when judgment comes, it comes to the house of God first. So continue to pray for this channel. Like, share as much as you want. Um, again, take everything I say before the Lord, before his word, and I encourage you all, and I will talk to you soon. It's good to be back.